Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again. And in this video, we're going to speak about relationships in Power Pivot and in Power BI. Now, if you've never worked with relationships before in Power Pivot or in Power BI, let me tell you that relationships are like a virtual VLOOKUPs. I mean, doing the task of a VLOOKUP without actually performing a VLOOKUP. Let me just show you an example and relationships will make more sense once you understand this. Take a look at this simple data set where we have the transaction ID, we have the date, uh, some payout date, region, product ID, units are the number of products sold, channel, affiliate code, and the interval. This is our sales table. Every single transaction occupies one single row. Now we have the product ID here, but we do not have the name of the product. That means if I wanna find the name of the product against the product ID, I would have to perform a VLOOKUP and go over to the products table and take a look at uh, the product code and then take a look at the relevant product name. And that's how I can find the product name. Now, if I wanna take a look at the category of the product, I again have to do a VLOOKUP again in my sales table, search for the ID and then extract the category of that product. Now, obviously, if I ask you to perform a VLOOKUP uh, and give me the total unit sold, by the name of the product or by the category of that product and both of which are kept in the products table, you would definitely have to write two VLOOKUP formulas to get the category and to get the product name and then you could plug that this data, the entire data with the additional two columns into a pivot table and you can give me the total units sold. But that my friend, we're gonna do that without actually performing a VLOOKUP by using relationships in Power Pivot. Now relationships are absolutely the same in Power Pivot and Power BI, just like differences. I'm just gonna talk about that during the course of the video. Let's just take a look at how relationships are created and how could they benefit immensely. So I've moved over to a blank Excel file, which is where I have Power Pivot. And if I click on manage, I have already loaded the sales table and the products table in my data model. And now I'm assuming that you already know how to load the data. So I've just loaded the data directly to the data model. There is another calendar table here, which we will speak about a little later. As of now, uh, here is the data. So if I hop over to the data view, uh, you can take a look that I have the sales table, exactly the same table that we saw earlier and the products table. Now let's just take a look at how can we create a relationship. I'm gonna create a relationship between the product ID of the sales table and the product code from the products table. Note that, you do not necessarily need to have the same column name while creating a relationship. So I'm gonna take the product ID, simply drag this, and it's gonna show an arrow like a thing, and I'm just gonna link it with the product code right here. And you will find that uh, the relationship has been created between product ID and the product code. Now, once the relationship is established, what all I could do is probably I can create a pivot table from here, and then uh, maybe in the current worksheet, maybe right here only, and I'm gonna take one, one column from the sales table and drop it in the values. And the other column, I'm gonna pick it up from the products table and drop it in the rows. And you can see that I have category-wise the total number of units sold. Now this, you wouldn't have been able to do if you were working with the regular Excel. Now this is possible because we have created a relationship. I can get the columns from the related lookup table and then slice and dice my data in my transactions table. I could even do products. So remove category from here and drag the products from here. And I can now have the number of products sold, the number of units sold by different products. All right, so I've just loaded the data, the same data into Power BI as well and just wanted to show you the relationship tab here. The relationship in Power Pivot or in Power BI are exactly created the same way. Now you can take a look that the sales table has been automatically linked to the products table. This happens as soon as you load the data into Power BI. This happens automatically in Power BI. You don't have to do anything. But uh, I will give you a word of caution that you definitely need to check the relationship once because the relationships tend to get created between the tables automatically. It's a good habit to check the relationships once. So let's just take a look. Uh, we have uh, the product ID here being linked to our product code, which was the correct relationship. Now I wanna talk about four different cautions that um, or maybe pitfalls that I will say that often happens while you create relationships in Power Pivot 
or in Power BI. The first one is really important, which is the direction of the relationship. Now, when you're creating a relationship, let me just delete that once and let me explain to you. Now, when you are creating a relationship in Power Pivot or in Power BI, the direction of the relationship should always be from the transactions table to the lookup table. What do you mean by a transaction and what do you mean by a lookup table? Now a transactions table is a table where you actually write a VLOOKUP formula. So let's just take a look. Now this is my uh, sales data. Now this is actually where I would write a VLOOKUP formula to fetch the name of the product from the products table. So wherever you write the VLOOKUP as a general thumb rule is your transactions table. And wherever you fetch the data from is your source or lookup table. It's also called as dimensions table. This is also called as facts table, transactions table, whatever you call it. Point being that you always have to start the relationship from the facts or the transactions table and then link it up to the lookup or the dimensions table. That's the right way of building a relationship, not the opposite. All right, the second thing that I want to talk about is that a power BI supports two kinds of relationships. You can take a look that there is just one product code here. That means there are no duplicates here. Uh, just one product code here, but there could be many product codes that are sold right in the sales transactions table. So Power BI supports two types of relationships. Right now, our relationship is one to many relationships. You can see the one here and you can see the star here. That means many, one to many. The other kind of relationship that Power BI supports is one to one relationship. I mean, you could again have just one product code here. I mean, I don't know when that situation would happen, but let's say for instance, if you haven't made enough of sales and as of now only unique products have sold. So it will, as soon as you create a relationship, it will automatically form a one to one relationship. You don't have to do anything about it. So Power BI supports two of them, one to many and one to one. On the other side, Power Pivot supports just one kind of relationships. That means only one to many. You can't really create a one to one uh, relationship in uh, Power Pivot for Excel. Also, you can't have many to many relationships. You can't really have many product IDs here and many uh, product codes here. So all right, so the third thing that I want to speak about is that you can create multiple relationships from the lookup table into the transactions table, but only one relationship can stay active. Let's just take a look. So we have uh, two types of dates here. The first one is the sale date and the other one is the affiliate payout date. Now you can see that we have some affiliates selling the products for us and this affiliate sold the product on the 3rd of January, but he was actually paid out the commission money on the 1st of March. So all your calculations will be happening on the date of the sale. But if you want to calculate the affiliate payout, then you would have to use this date. Now, if you're trying to create a relationship between the date column of the sales table and the date column of the calendar table, that relationship is going to stay active. Let's just take a look. So I'm creating a relationship from uh, the sales table, which is my transactions table to the lookup table, which is my calendar table. And I clearly have one active relationship. Now, in case I'm trying to calculate my uh, affiliate, sorry, the commission payout, I'm going to have to link the affiliate payout date as well to the calendar date. So if I link this date to the calendar date, you can see that the second line that comes over is a dotted line. This means that this relationship is inactive. All the calculations, all the measures uh, will work as per the active relationship, not as per the inactive relationship. Now what you could do is you could turn on the inactive relationship by using a user relationship formula. I just want to show you that as well. So you can see that in my sales table, I have already calculated two, two things here, commission earned and commission paid. As of now, both are the same. Commission earned is the same and commission paid is also the same. I'm also going to get the uh, month and the year right here. And you can see that both are the same as, as of now because the formula is absolutely the same. I'm just going to go over here, click on edit measure, and I'm just going to write user relationship here to activate the inactive relationship between the calendar date and my sales table affiliate payout date. And you will notice that suddenly the calculation starts to change a bit. Now you can see that uh, in the month of April, this is sorted as per alphabetical order, which should have been sorted as per 
the calendar year but as of now just take a look so in the month of april um, the commission earned was 22 but only 15 was paid out in august you had 20 but only 16 was paid out in december 90 was earned but 122 was paid out that means that the commissions of the earlier month was also paid out all right moving on to the fourth caution now duplicates are not allowed in the lookup tables they are only allowed in the transactions table and this is our lookup table the products table and as of now this doesn't have any duplicates had there been a duplicate when we were creating a relationship for the first time this would have given you an error right so let's just go over to our on the data and let's just try and create a duplicate here let's see what happens so i'm just going to repeat this once again the entire stuff once again save it now let's just refresh the model so if i select the products table and i hit a refresh you will find that this gives you an error so duplicates are definitely not allowed in uh, power pivot or in power bi at the first time when you're creating a relationship at that time if it detects a duplicate it would not even let you create a relationship and it would give you an error that there are duplicates here the last thing that i want to speak about in this video is filter propagation as in how do filters and relationships exactly work in uh, power bi or in power pivot so when you create a relationship between the transactions table and the lookup table the filters always flow from the lookup table to the transactions table to explain you better as to what i what do i mean to say i have created a small calculation at the back end take a look so over here i have calculated total sales right here so you can see that i have a measure called total sales and let's just take a look at total sales by category which is coming from the products table now i have picked up the category from the products table and i have calculated total sales total sales is nothing but an extremely simple measure for some x where i'm multiplying the price with the units and i get the total sales now you can see that i am getting the bifurcation of the total sales by different category and category is coming from the products table that means that the filters are coming from the lookup table and filtering my uh, sales table right but the other way it would not happen that means you cannot filter a measure which is built on the lookup table by a column in the transactions table this would make more sense when you take a look at this example now just like total sales i have calculated another measure called total products that means the number of products so if you take a look that i have simply taken account of all the product codes in the products table simple and if i try to remove that try to remove that and uh, put the total products right here this will give me that okay fine i have 12 different products now if i would like to filter this 12 by maybe region which is coming from the sales table this would not happen so filters only come from the lookup table to the transactions table and not vice versa so i cannot really filter this measure which is built on the products table by a by a column in the sales table and you can see that the answer is wrong 12 12 and 12 this is certainly not right um, and even if i keep an, any other column maybe interval or maybe even channel all of this is again and again going to give me a wrong answer all right that's about it if you have any questions on relationships just relationships in power bi or power pivot uh, please do let me know in the comment section i'll be more than happy to help you out thanks for watching this and you take care of yourselves bye bye